The second largest bank in the United States is Bank of America stock ticker BAC currently trading at $27.82 per share. Now while the US's S&P 500 is up quite a bit year to date, we can see Bank of America year to date down nearly 17%. They're trading as high as around $36.77 per share in February, but as of right now again, down all the way to $27.82. Now the good news about trading at a lower price is they now have a higher starting dividend yield. It's sitting right at 3. Four two percent So in this video, we need to answer a few questions, but the main one we want to answer is, is Bank of America trading at $27.82 a good price to consider buying in at? Now, if we scroll out and look at the past five years, we can see they're actually down about 9.5%. They had a really nice run up in their share price starting in about March of 2020, all the way up to around February of 2022, where they traded as high as around $49.28 per share. But since then, it has been on a steady downward trend. Now, does this present a buying opportunity. Before we jump into that, let's go ahead and look at some of these dividend metrics. Now, we already pointed out the nice starting dividend yield, but let's take a look at this dividend history. If we scroll out, we can see a lot of dividend growth over the past 10 years. In 2013, they were paying out one cents per share every single quarter and jump forward to now. It's now sitting at 24 cents per share every single quarter. Now, one of the things that I do want to point out is banks during periods of economic downturn are pretty hesitant to increase the amount they pay out in dividends. So for example, you can see during 2020, they waited for quite some time to start raising their dividend payouts again. So that is something to keep in mind if you're considering bank stocks. Now, if we look at the dividend growth rates again, like we just saw, they are extremely high over a 10 year period, sitting at around 36.53%. Now, obviously that's not sustainable. They won't continue to raise it that much, but the five year and three year dividend growth rates are pretty solid as well, with the three year coming in at around 7.7% and the five year around 12.3%. Now, how safe are their dividend payments? And if we scroll down, we can see their dividend payout ratio for the trailing 12 months sitting at 25.86% and the dividend payout ratio for the trailing 12 months with non-GAAP practices sitting at about 25.86% as well. So it looks like those dividend payments are pretty safe as of right now. Now, I do want to jump into my bank valuation spreadsheet. Before we do that, I want to point out a couple of things in their most recent quarter's earnings report. The first thing I want to jump to is on the third slide. And like I mentioned earlier, Bank of America is the second largest bank in the United States of America. But despite their large size, in order for the company to grow, we obviously still need to see growth in the consumer banking, in global banking, in wealth and investment management, and in the global markets. And that's actually exactly what they've been able to do. We can see in the second quarter of 2023, they added 157,000 new checking accounts, which is the 18th consecutive quarter of growth. Now, that's a really good sign. That's something that I really like to see when I'm looking at banks. You want to see increase in total deposits, and really, that's kind of an indicator that that's probably what you're going to get. You can see they added over 1.2 million credit cards accounts and they now have a record 3.7 million consumer investment accounts. Now, if we jump over to the 11th side, one thing that I do want to point out is the total loans in leases. And obviously we're looking at this amount in billions and we can see year over year, the total loans in leases is up around 3%. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but you have to keep in mind Banks don't want to grow too fast because it could put them in a dangerous financial position. Obviously, a bank having a healthy balance sheet is of the utmost importance. So again, we want to see growth, but we don't want to see rapid growth. We want to see slow and steady growth, especially from larger banks such as Bank of America. So to me, it could be a little bit higher, but overall, I think that's a pretty good number. Now, the last thing I want to point out in this investor's report is net interest income. To me, this is one of the most important metrics when looking at a bank stock. And year over year, they've actually seen a really nice increase in their net interest income. It's up around 14%. So to me, that's a really good sign once again. So now that we've pointed out a couple key metrics in this investor's presentation, let's go ahead and jump to my bank slash financial valuation spreadsheet, where we can look at a few different valuation models specifically designed for banks. So if you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet and join a community of dividend investors, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. But okay, let's go ahead and come up here and plug in BAC, Bank of America's ticker, and hit enter. And you can see all of this data will automatically load in. Now we've already touched on the dividend metrics a little bit. They're paying out around 96 cents per share quarterly, gives them a nice starting yield at around 3.45% and a payout ratio of around 25%. Now we can see the 2050 and 200 day moving averages like the market all down quite a bit. We can see analysts going to have a target price of around $35.50, institutional ownership around 71% and a beta of 1.37. So you actually will see 
quite a bit of volatility with this stock. But keep in mind that does provide opportunities to buy in at good prices. Now, the first valuation model that we'll be looking at is Graham's valuation, a valuation model invented by Benjamin Graham in order to calculate intrinsic value. So what we need to do is we take the earnings per share, we multiply that by our growth rate projection, and I am staying in line with analyst expectations of around four, multiply that by 4.4, which is the average yield on AAA corporate bonds, and then divide by Y, which is our current yield on AAA corporate bonds. And right now this is sitting very high at 5.07, and this will drive down that valuation by quite a bit. But once we plugged all this in, we come to an intrinsic value of around $33.13, a little bit above that current trading price. Now, the next valuation we're going to look at is actually one of my favorites for a bank stock, and that is the historical price to tangible book value. Tangible book value is a very important metric when looking at bank stocks. So basically what I've done is I plugged in the share price over the past decade for Bank of America and the tangible book value per share for Bank of America over the past decade. And what this allows us to do is we can see the historical price to tangible book value, and I have it charted out right here. So it looks like historically speaking, it has stayed above one, and over the past four or five years, it has climbed up quite a bit with it being as high as around 2.07 in 2021 and in 2022 around 1.51. Now the current price to tangible book value is sitting at 1.21, while the average price to tangible book value over the past decade sitting at 1.47. And you can see since around 2017, it looks like it's been around 1.65 or above with the exception of 2020 when it was sitting at around 1.39. So compared to where it's traded at historically, it looks like this is one of the better times for its current valuation. Now to be fair, Warren Buffett has stated before that when he's looking for bank stocks, he likes to see their price to tangible book value if he's going to consider buying below one. Now Bank of America is sitting at 1.21 and I really doubt that we see it climb below one at any point in the near future. And that's probably because again, this is one of the largest banks in the United States. So it's probably gonna trade at a little bit of a premium but again, historically speaking, it looks like it is a little bit undervalued compared to where it's historically been. Now, the next valuation that we'll look at is the multiples valuation, and this is a fairly simple valuation. We're taking companies that are similar in structure, taking their stock price, dividing by earnings per share to find their price to earnings multiple, take the average PE multiple and multiply it by Bank of America's earnings per share, and we come to an intrinsic value of $34.32, pretty close to what we got with Graham's valuation. It's also pretty close to if we come down here to what we saw analysts have their target price at. Now the last valuation model is one of my favorites and that is the dividend discount model. This is a way to value a company based on how much they pay out in dividends and how much that dividend is increasing year over year. And like I've pointed out when we were looking at Seeking Alpha, which by the way, you can get a discount to at my link in the description. But if we scroll down again, really good history of dividend growth, but there are some periods where they're hesitant to grow their dividend, which we'll be able to see in our valuation. We saw a year with 20%, a year with 0%, a year with 16.67 and then the most recent 4.76. So it's kind of all over the place, but that's an average growth rate of a little over 10%. Moving forward, I'm projecting a dividend growth rate of around 6%, discount rate of 9%, and that gives us a dividend discount model price per share of $31.09. So when we jump over to our output tab, I'll zoom out just a little bit so we can see it all. But we can see all four valuations that we use. We have grams at 33, multiples at 34.3, and dividend discount model at 31.09, and the current price to tangible book value sitting at 1.21, which is a little bit below that historical average. So when we average all these valuations together, we come to an entrance value of $32.85. Now the current trading price at the time of this video was sitting at $27.81. So with a 10% margin of safety, you could see our acceptable buy price around $29.57. And with a 20% margin of safety, our acceptable buy price around $26.28. So while it does look like Bank of America is a little bit undervalued as of right now, you do have to keep in mind, bank stocks can be a little volatile and they are very susceptible to market downturns. Meaning if the market continues to decline, I think it's likely that we see Bank of America's share price continue to decline as well. But if you are willing to handle short-term volatility and potential short-term downfalls in their share price, then I think long-term you could potentially see some decent returns. But there you go, there is a quick analysis on Bank of America stock. Go ahead and let me know what you think of this company in the comments down below. If you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet and join a community of dividend investors, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.